Hey everyone, this is Jeremy Schiefling, founder and chief nerd at Breaking Into Tech. Just want to start by thanking you for taking time out of your busy Friday. I promise to make it totally worth your while by focusing on the three most important steps to break into tech. First, I'm going to show you how to find the perfect tech role for you. Then I'm going to walk you through the exact process step-by-step step, to land an interview for that role. And finally, I'm going to give you a cool hack to get the experience you need to ace your interview without spending a cent on any kind of training. So let's get started with the first step, finding the right role. Now, this is an easy step to skip since lots of wannabe techies, which is absolutely myself when I was back um, on the other side of tech looking in, immediately start to focus on companies. You know, after all, it's the big brand names that make tech such a sexy industry. The Googles, the Facebooks, the Ubers. But let's be honest, focusing on those companies is a total trap. Because if you put yourselves in the shoes of this guy, and he's a recruiter at Google who's scanning through a billion resumes a day, how likely is it that he's going to focus his search on this? Exactly. Because in the tech world, your passion for a specific company is just table stakes. We take that for granted. What really separates the rock stars from the noobs, as they say, is whether you can actually do the job. And since that's what recruiters care about, that's what you need to care about. But in the process, just be careful not to psych yourself out ahead of time, kind of like I did. Because it's easy to look at these weird tech titles and think, oh man, I just don't belong here. You know, for example, here are all these weird nonprofit and education titles that I had before I worked in tech. And on paper, it would seem like I was totally unqualified for all the tech titles I wanted. There was just no alignment. And yet, when you peel back the actual work behind those titles, there really is a strong connection to the real work of the tech space. And as you can see here, the trick is about finding that alignment, connecting what you did in the past to what you want to do in the future. And that means you've got to understand first and foremost what these tech jobs are really about. And then, and only then, can you connect them back to your experience. So let me start with a quick overview of the top 12 non-technical tech jobs, again, open pretty much to everyone, regardless of your coding background, beginning with the Apple car. So as you may have heard, Apple is going back and forth on whether they want to launch their own self-driving electric car. They're kind of like the hamlet of the tech space, to build or not to build, that is the question. And if they do decide to build, it's going to take the skills of every major tech role to pull this thing off. First, they're going to have a biz ops or business operations team crunch the numbers to make sure the project is viable. This is basically like internal strategy. Then they're going to have the HR team start hiring people with automotive experience. But because that's too slow to staff up a giant team, corporate development, aka the mergers and acquisitions uh, function of the organization, will probably just go out and acquire a whole startup full of engineers. Once those folks are on board, then the research team briefs those folks on the trends in the electric car space, who the buyers are, what they want, and the product managers or the PMs take those insights and start building out the car specs, what it's going to do, how it's going to work. Now to bring those specs to life, you need project managers, so project managers, not product managers, to break the concept into tasks and delegate them to engineers. And then the operations team takes all of that and builds out a supply chain for every part, from production through assembly. And with the car nearly ready to roll off the assembly line, marketing does what it does best. It stirs up demand with campaigns to get people salivating for the new product, ready to open their pocketbooks for pretty much anything that Apple rolls out. But even the most diehard Apple fans still want to buy a car the old-fashioned way, i.e. do a test drive. And the trick is, Apple doesn't have any dealerships where they can do that. So maybe they have their biz dev team or business development compensate by making a deal with Hertz to offer free test drives at every car rental counter in the world in exchange for giving Hertz exclusivity for two years on the Apple car. And then because large organizations are not exactly willing to buy hundreds of cars on the internet, you've got the sales team working with the owners of large fleets to negotiate deals in person. And then even after the sales closed, the team's work still isn't over because Apple wants to make sure their customers have an amazing experience. So they have the customer success team drive new cars right to their owner's homes to show them all the features. And then finally, the finance and accounting teams crunch the numbers on the sales, making Tim Cook super happy come earnings season. And so as you can see here, there are a ton of awesome roles in the tech space, none that require any kind of coding background. But it is important to understand how they connect up with what you've done in the past. And to assess that, I've actually built out 
a whole spectrum of former roles, whether you were working individually, focusing on data, or working collaboratively with a giant team, and you can basically see the alignment from what you've done in the past to what you want to do in the future. Now, in my online course, I have a much more thorough process for finding the right job. But in the interest of time today, let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is getting an interview for the job that's right for you. Now to start, let's return to our guy, the tech recruiter, and imagine what his computer screen looks like basically day and night. This is an actual screenshot of the applicant tracking system that I used in my last startup. And as you can see, it's pretty darn awful. You've got hundreds of random applicants, no way to figure out who's really worthy of an interview. Hmm, if only there was some kind of shortcut. And guess what? There totally is. It's called referrals. Because if I can whittle down that giant list of randos to just the candidates referred by my trusted colleagues, well, guess what? My job just got a whole lot easier, which is why referred candidates are 10 times more likely to get a job than those who apply online. You know, for example, here's the automatic Google blow-off letter that I got through their online system at least a dozen times in my own experience as an applicant. You've probably seen it too if you've ever waded into this online black hole. And to compare that, here's the letter that I got the day after I got my first referral to Google. Big difference, right? So now, let me show you exactly how to get your own referral step by step. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go over to LinkedIn. Hopefully you have your profile and your account ready to go. Don't worry if it's not perfect, you don't need that yet. The most important thing about LinkedIn though is that its value comes not from your profile or your endorsements, but from the connections that you have on the site. Let me emphasize that part, on the site. Even if you're connected to a million people in real life, if those people are not your connections on LinkedIn, you can't get all the value out of LinkedIn from seeing who they're connected to. And you're gonna see why that matters in a second. Before we get there though, let me just explain that if you wanna get all your real world connections onto LinkedIn as fast as possible, the absolute most efficient way is to go to the upper right hand corner and then add your contacts from your address books. So maybe your work email, your personal Gmail, your school's account, your address book on your phone through the LinkedIn mobile app, all those accounts belong on LinkedIn. And don't worry about, oh man, this seems kind of shady. I would never invite these people to Facebook. LinkedIn is not Facebook. LinkedIn is not party pictures and red cups and all that kind of stuff. LinkedIn is professional. If you have a professional connection to these folks or might one day take advantage of that, they belong connected to you on LinkedIn. There really is no downside. And what you're about to see is that the upside is huge. Because after you've imported your connections, what you want to do is go to the advanced search function right up there at the very top. And then from here, drill down to the exact sort of right person that you wanna um, get a referral from. So if you're thinking about a giant company at Google and you wanna work on the marketing team, don't just go after some random Googler, go after someone who works on the team that you want because their voice is gonna be amplified. So what you do is you go to current company, go ahead and plug in Google. In addition, put marketing in the title and notice if you wanna have the function search, you have to pay LinkedIn 50 bucks a month just for the premium um, subscription that offers that. But you can get around that by just searching for the title. Everything I'm gonna show you today is absolutely zero cost. And then lastly, once you have marketers at Google, now let's put on the second connection filter. That way we're gonna find folks who share a connection with us and that will be the ideal target for us. So we run our search and sure enough, We've got over a thousand folks at Google who not only work on the marketing team, but share connection in common. And we can see those shared connections by clicking the little green link underneath each name. So if I decide, wow, Alexander Lewis is the perfect guy for me, it would be awesome to get in touch with him. And if he gave me a referral, I'd be golden on his team. Well, let's see who we know in common. And what you want to do is sort through this giant list and figure out who's the most prepared to really advocate for you, to write a message to Alexander sort of touting your um, accomplishments and singing your praises. And in this case, for me, it might be Sudeep, given that I both went to school with him and worked with him. So he's seen me perform at my highest levels. So now, I might normally just say, hey, Sudeep, can you introduce me to Alexander? But Sudeep's a busy guy. He's got his own life to live. If I wanna make sure that it's really easy for Sudeep, let me take all the friction out of the process by sending him not just a message, but also a message that's already ready to go, and all he has to do is forward it and CC me. And if you want to grab the same template, go to bit.ly slash fit dash second. And you can apply the same template 
which has worked wonders for me in terms of getting referrals and introductions at all the companies where I want to interview. And ultimately, that process, uploading your address book, finding mutual contacts at the companies you want to work for, and requesting introductions, that's the smoothest one, two, three process into a referral. Now, as we return to the third and final step, which is getting experience, I want to be clear with you guys. Anyone who is remotely clever can finagle a tech interview one way or another. But actually getting that job, going through the interview gauntlet, that's going to require a little experience. And I also want to be clear that experience is not the same thing as taking a Coursera class. Because as tempting as it may be to get quote unquote certified, certification is all about knowledge, which would be great if this was a typical tech interview question. Unfortunately, this question has never once come up in the hundreds of interviews I've been in, both as an interviewer and interviewee. The other question that is asked almost every time, however, is this version. Because at the end of the day, tech firms are judged on only one thing. Did you launch awesome products that people love or not? And since nothing else matters, knowledge by itself isn't enough. Instead, you're going to need experience to prove that you too can deliver the goods, which I know can feel like a total catch-22. I mean, how are you going to get the experience without a job? And how are you going to get the job without experience? So now, let me show you a killer shortcut that won't cost you a cent. So what you're going to do is go over to a site called Upwork. Now, Upwork is basically the LinkedIn of freelancing. All the world's freelancers, all the companies that are hiring freelancers, all in one place, talking about jobs and hiring day in and day out. So you go over to Upwork, you create an account, and then you go to the category job search. So yeah, there are a lot of technical jobs here, but let's say you want to get that Google marketing job. And you know that when you walk into the interview room at Google, they're not going to say, hey, tell me about your theoretical knowledge of marketing. They're going to say, tell me about a time you launched a campaign. Tell me about a time you deliver results through marketing. So we're going to go down to sales and marketing. And maybe the particular role that we really want at Google is a social media marketing job, something that sort of manages Google's various social channels. Well, in that case, let's hone in on that subspecialty. And we notice that there are lots and lots of jobs here, almost 3,000 in total. Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, et cetera, et cetera. And the important thing to realize is that you don't have to be an expert to get these jobs. So for example, let's say that you have some Instagram expertise yourself, but more on the personal side. You've just done a good job of managing your own account. You've never done it for a corporation. Well, in this case, if you check out this particular job listing, you're going to find that they're going to pay entry level, and it's not that long a job, and they just need someone to help them gain followers and engagement. And I guarantee, if you can do that for yourself, you can do that for an organization. You can do, this, do that for this other person. And the important thing is, not only might you make a little money out here, as opposed to spending money on a course, but when you walk into that interview room back at Google, and they say, tell me about a time that you grew a social media following, or tell me about a time that you engage people on Instagram, Instead of just saying, hey, here's what I would do, you can say, here's what I have done. And that difference is so powerful because nine times out of 10, I'm going to pick the person who's done it, who has that track record, as opposed to the person who only has potential. And this gives you that track record. This gives you that portfolio to walk into any interview room with confidence and say, hey, I've done this before and I can do it again and I'm going to do it for you. So that's how you get experience without spending a cent. And now that we've covered the three most important steps to breaking the tech, finding the right job for you, getting the interview through referrals, and then getting the experience without already having a full-time job in tech. But as a thank you for joining me today, let me offer one final bonus step. Because although we've covered a lot today, it's actually only about 10% of my overall online course, which includes a full algorithm for picking the right role, complete scripts for engaging recruiters and tech experts, just like the one that I show you, the exact keywords you want on your resume and LinkedIn profile, and of course, personalized coaching each step along the way. And because I'm this former kindergarten teacher who's an educator at heart, I love that coaching part the best. And so I'm proud to offer you a special opportunity focused on that. Because if you order my support team edition, which includes personalized resume or LinkedIn reviews, you can actually have it today for the same price as the basic version. Or if you'd prefer the full Sherpa edition, which is both the review and an hour of live coaching, you can actually snag that for just the support team price. Either way, just be sure to grab those at courses.breakintotech by midnight tonight, 
Friday, January 13th in Silicon Valley, aka Pacific time. And no matter what you decide, I just want to leave you with the most important message of all. Because as you've probably seen from my writings on the website, I wasted a whole decade of my career believing that tech was closed off to me, when in fact, the exact opposite was true. So if you take anything away from this session, please let it be this. If you're passionate about tech and you believe you have something to contribute here, don't sit on the sidelines even one more day wishing you had your dream tech job. Instead, go out there and get it. Because I can't wait to see you break into tech and I want you to have an amazing experience every step along the way. Good luck out there.